prayers of our divine mother question sweet mother what is the difference between pleasure joy happiness ecstasy and ananda when can we find can we find one in the other for this our divine mother says ananda belongs to the supreme lord ecstasy belongs to the perfected yogi joy belongs to the desireless man pleasure is within the reach of all living beings but with its inevitable accomplishment or accompaniment of suffering with my love and blessing since our divine words of our lord sri aurobindo from the collective works of our lord sri aurobindo volume 13 book essays on the gita topic the core of the gita's meaning the message of gita page 567 new stanza Allah Shiva Bindu says the first step on this free this equal this divine way of action is to put from you attachment to fruit and recompense and to labor only for the sake of the work itself that has to be done for you must deeply feel that the fruits belong not to you but to the master of the world consecrate your labor and leave its returns to the spirit who manifests and fulfills himself in the universal moment the outcome of your action is determined by his will alone and whatever it be good or evil fortune success or failure it is turned by him to the accomplishment of his world purpose an entirely desireless and disinterested working of the personal will and the whole instrument nature is the first rule of karma yoga demand no fruit accept whatever result is given to you accept it with equality and a calm gladness successful or foiled prosperous or afflicted continue unafraid untroubled and unwearing on the steep path of the divine action a lord sri aurobindo says there is no more than the first step on the path for you must be not only unattached to results but unattached also to your labor cease to regard your work as your own as you have abandoned the fruits of your work so you must surrender the work also to the lord of action and sacrifice recognize that your nature determines your action your nature rules the immediate motion of your swabhava and decides the expressive turn and development of your spirit in the paths of the executive force of prakriti bring in no longer any self will to confuse the steps of your mind in following the godward way accept the action proper to your nature make of all you do from the greatest and most unusual effort to the smallest daily act make of each act of your mind each act of your heart each act of your body of your inner outer turn of your every thought and will and feeling of every step pause and moment a sacrifice to the master of all sacrifice and tapasya So when he wandered into the forest of her conscious spirit walked with him and knew 
his actions as if in herself he would. He, less aware, thrilled with her from afar. I'm not sure when this is. Next, know that you are an eternal portion of the eternal and the powers of your nature. And the powers of your nature are nothing without him, if not his partial self-expression. It is the divine infinite that is being progressively fulfilled in your nature. It is the supreme power to be. It is the Shakti of the Lord that shapes and takes shape in your Swabhava. Give up then all sense that you are the doer. See the eternal alone as the doer of the action. Let your natural being be an occasion, an instrument, a channel of power, a means of manifestation. Offer up your will to Him. Make it one with His eternal will. Surrender all your actions in the silence of yourself and spirit to the transcendent master of your nature. This cannot be really done or done perfectly so long as there is any ego sense in you or any mental claim or vital claimer. Action done in the least degree for the sake of ego or tinged with the desire and the will of the ego is not a perfect sacrifice. Nor can this great thing be well and truly done so long as there is inequality anywhere or any stamp of ignorance shrinking and preference. But when there is a perfect equality to all works, results, things and persons, a surrender to the highest and not to desire or ego, then the divine will determines without stumbling or defliction and the divine power executes freely without any nether interference or perverting reaction all works in the purity and safety of your transmuted nature. Alon Shri Aurobindo says to allow your every act to be shaped through you by the divine will in its immaculate sovereignty is the highest degree of the perfection that comes by doing works in yoga. That done, your nature will follow its cosmic walk in a complete and constant union with the Supreme, express the highest self, obey the Ishvara. This way of divine works is a far better release and a more perfect way and solution than the physical renunciation of life and works. Our Lord says a physical absentation is not entirely possible and is not the measure of its possibility indispensable to the spirit's freedom. It is besides a dangerous example. For it exerts a misleading influence on ordinary men. The best, the greatest set the standard which the rest of the humanity strive to follow. Then, since action is the nature of the embodied spirit, since works are the will of the eternal worker, the great spirits, the master minds, should set this example, world workers should they, Doing all the works of the world without reservation, God workers free, glad and desireless, liberated souls and nature. And Lord Sri Aurobindo says, The mind of knowledge and the will of action are not at all. There is within you a heart whose demand is for delight. Here too, in the heart's power and illumination, in its demand for delight, for the soul's satisfaction, your nature must be turned, transformed and lifted to one conscious ecstasy with the divine. The knowledge of the impersonal self brings its own ananda. There is a joy of impersonality, a singleness of the joy of the pure spirit, but an integral knowledge brings a great triple delight. 
It opens the gates of the transcendence bliss. It releases into the limitless delight of a universal personality. It discovers the rapture of all this multitudinous manifestation. For there is a joy of the eternal in nature, this ananda in the jiva, a portion here of the divine, takes the form of an ecstasy founded in the Godhead, who is his source in his supreme self, in the master of his existence. An entire God love and adoration extends to a love of the world and all its forms and powers and creatures. In all the divine is seen, is found, is adored, is served, or is felt in oneness. Add knowledge and works, this crown of the eternal triune delight, admit this love, learn this worship, make it one spirit with works and knowledge. That is the apex of the perfect perfection. This yoga of love, says our Lord, this yoga of love will give you a highest potential force for spiritual largeness and unity and freedom. But it must be a love which is one with the God knowledge. There is a devotion which seeks God in suffering for consolation and succor and deliverance. There is a devotion which seeks Him for His gifts, for divine aid and protection, and as a fountain of the satisfaction of desire. There is a devotion that, still ignorant, turns to Him for light and knowledge. And... So long as one is limited to these forms, they may persist even in the highest and noblest Godward, turn a working of the three gunas. But when the God-lover is also the God-knower, the lover knows oneself with the beloved, for he is the chosen of the Most High and the elect of the Spirit. Develop in yourself this God-engrossed love, the heart spiritualized and lifted beyond the limitations of its lower nature will reveal to you most intimately the secrets of God's immeasurable being, bring into you the whole touch and influx and glory of his divine power and open to you the mysteries of an eternal rapture. It is perfect love that is the key to a perfect knowledge. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, This integral God love demands too an integral work for the sake of the divine in yourself and in all creatures. The ordinary man does work in obedience to some desires, sinful or virtuous, some vital impulses, low or high, some mental choice, common or exalted, or from some mixed mind and life motive. But the work done by you must be free and desireless. Work done without desire creates no reaction, imposes no bondage. Done in a perfect equality and an unmoved calm and peace, but without any divine passion, it is at first the fine yoke of a spiritual obligation, kartavyam karma, then the uplifting of a divine sacrifice. At its highest, it can be the expression of a calm and glad acquaintance in active oneness. The oneness in love will do much more. It will replace the first impassive calm by a strong and deep rapture, not the petty ardor of egoistic desire, but the ocean of an infinite ananda. It will bring the moving sense and pure and divine passion of the presence of the beloved into your works. There will be an incessant joy of labor for God in yourself and for God in all beings. Love is the crown of works and the crown of knowledge. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, This love that is knowledge, this love that can be the deep heart of your action, will be your most effective force for an utter consecration and complete perfection. An integral union of the individual's being with the divine being is the condition of a perfect spiritual life. Turn then altogether towards the divine, make one with him by knowledge, 
Love and works all your nature. Turn utterly towards him and give up ungrudgingly into his hands your mind and your heart and your will, all your consciousness and even your very senses and body. Let your consciousness be sovereignly moulded by him into a flawless mould of his divine consciousness. Let your heart become a lucid or a flaming heart of the divine. Let your will be an impeccable action of his will. Let your very sense and body be the rapture sensation and body of the divine. Adore and sacrifice to him with all you are. Remember him in every thought and feeling, every impulsion and act. Persevere until all these things are wholly his and he has taken up even in the most common and outward things as in the inmost sacred chamber of your spirit his constant transmuting presence. Our Lord says this triune way is the means by which you can rise entirely out of your lower into your supreme spiritual nature. That is the hidden superconscious nature in which the jiva, a portion of the high infinite and divine and intimately one in law of being, with him dwells in his truth and not any longer in an externalized mayan. This perfection, this unity can be enjoyed in its own native status, aloof in a supreme supracosmic existence, but here also you may and should realize it, here in the human body and physical world. It is not enough for this end to be calm and inactive and free from the gunas and the inner self and to watch and allow indefinitely, indifferently their mechanical action in the outer chambers. For the active nature as well as the self has to be given to the divine and to become divine. All that you are must grow into one law of being with the Purushottama, Sa Dharmya. All must be changed into my conscious spiritual being, Mat Bhava. A complete surrender must be there. Take refuge with me in all the many ways and along the living lines of your nature, for that alone will bring about this change and perfection. We'll continue.